Hello everybody and welcome back to Dickie's Videos where no war game remains unblade. Further ado, here we are again with SPQR, uh, the unboxing, and this is a quick look at the rulebook. Uh, let me just say a little bit of a critique, which I'm going to say now guys. I will be going to some detail, but of course I can't go through the entire book because we're going to be here for hours. So what we're going to do guys, we're going to have a quick flip through, a quick discussion about the new rules, uh, and just have a quick merry old time. So as you can see, is a Warlord miniature book, uh, a Four, uh, the, the book that comes with the starter set so it's warband combat in the ancient world so we're gonna have a look through here so as we got here guys just the normal a few nice pictures on the front uh, we've got the contents we've got introduction models game turn move action shoot actions melee special actions troubling goal which of course is one of the um, uh, one of the introduction missions advanced rules the phalanx, equipment, heroes, minions, a campaign, scenarios, talent, creating war bands. So we've got some of the authors, etc. in there. So we're going to have a quick look. So here we are with the introduction. So I might have a quick spooze review here, guys, just give you a little bit of a uh, look into this. So uh, the miniature, miniatures, <coughs> miniatures gaming, miniature, miniatures gaming hobby is which which players collect <laughs> armies of models, soldiers and vehicles, taking part in the game against like-minded opponents. Played on a table featuring terrain ranging from open wasteland, wasteland to burnt city streets. Miniature gaming allows you to act out, general directing your forces in battle. So just talking about you know what it is, etc. You know, um, and just for maybe for new um, new people who are new to wargaming. So we've got like a little bit of historical inaccuracy or accuracy, I want to say. So when looking at the ancient world, uh, it should be acknowledged that there is a great deal we do not know, even for popular cultures such as Spartan, Romans, etc. So it goes into detail about what we know, what we didn't know about history, etc. From, of course. And then we've got what actually SPQR stands for. So the Roman senate and people um so just a little thing needing so the things you need to play apparently two or more players which of course um we've got a playing surface selection of spqr miniatures or like-minded miniatures uh, a tape measure six-sided dice colored dice so just a quick look at the rolling dice down here we have rolling dice the game uses a six-sided dice you will find beneficial have perhaps to have half a dozen dice hand to the game base so the rules assume that an unmodified roll of a one die is an automatic failure even if seven bonuses raise the result above one so if you need a one on palmer save and it's effectively a two up a one is always a fail um yeah uh if you ever call to roll a d3 simply half the result rounding up whenever the fractions arise elsewhere in the game always round down so re get reach get of course some situations uh you'll get re-rolls so some special situation may call you to re-roll the dice simply means you ignore the first result and roll the second all modifiers conditions affect the first roll are also conditioned to affect the second roll so it makes sense what affects the first affects the second so pre-measure distance some games miniature games you can't pre-measure i like games that you can pre-measure and i'd be happy for my opponent to um roll um re pre-measure which i do like it i play eight edition fantasy still uh, and we are allowed to uh, pre-measure which is kind of cool um so we've got preparation for play once you have a force your opponent there are just a couple things you need to do you will need to find a playing service uh, make sense plenty of terrain etc etc some nice pictures in these corners and you know, i do like these little scattered around pictures like i said guys we are not going into massive detail but we're gonna uh, have a quick look at the rules uh, to get some grip so we've got um, the models. So models in the SPQR miniature game represent individual characters, heroes, leaders. Their followers on the tabletop. Some of the, uh, some of these will be familiar to you, having come straight from history. However, you will also have a chance to create your own heroes and warlords. So that's quite an interesting little blurb there. So. Um, uh, so models uh, used in SPQR, especially those around man size, are mounted on their own plastic bases. All measurements in the game are made from the edge of the base. So interesting for edge of the base there. You, so um, here unit models which uh, which with the hero type generally act on their own as a single model. It makes sense. Minions, which are the general troops, on the other hand, band together for mutual protection to give them a chance against enemy heroes. So you've got your guys, your minions, which of course are just your general guys, and then your big guys are going to go and hit anybody. So infantry and cavalry. So units are defined by being either infantry or cavalry. So uh, an elephant guy in this game, elephants are cavalry. Uh, so facing, 
majority of the units uh, are fast moving agile in most cases you do not to worry about which models are pointing uh, as long as they move it and act same so it means you can you get a 360 view so you can just point move and then point whichever way you like which makes sense and you've got your little nice little picture you've got a nice little roman cavalry uh, charging some gorlicks so what we've got here we've got some characteristics we've got move which is always in inches uh, plus one range, which I assume for the benefit of the rules means you're normally hitting on a six, but he'll be hitting on a five. And here, six, five, four, which I assume, and you're getting two dice. Agility, I assume, it's when we're, you, you, there is climbing in this game. Bravery, I'm assuming when you take, um, you know, of course, bravery checks, armor, and wounds. So, like I said here, Denari is the point value. Uh, type of infantry, cavalry, or minion. Uh, hero or minion cavalry or infantry move the maximum distance you may move beyond there range how accurate your unit can be shooting melee how skill uh, unit in close combat melee dice how many dice so this guy here will get two dice which is cool uh, agility a competent unit when they're negotiating obstacles like i said before in uh, terrain uh, bravery how tough they are armor of course how good they are and wounds how many wounds they can take and there's a naked man in the corner um yeah we'll have a quick look here so types of unit, below listed are the various types of unit in SPQR. Uh, these heroes <coughs> are mighty leaders, uh, champions of the warbands, capable of great feats on the battlefield. So we've also got heroes. Nice little picture of a like a flaxman here, which is kind of cool. Cavalry heroes, so you can have heroes on horseback and also the infantry. Uh, and then also infantry and then cavalry minions, which are things. So, oh, I've not seen this, multiple base models. So SPQR assumes models are individually based books photographs throughout the book however uh, readers with existing collections models may find have miniatures that have been built with two of these or or six or four as you will discover this is not a significant issue with spqr and fielding miniatures based in this fashion will not impact the game tactics at all when removing models from a unit usually due to capacity being sustained you can even simply place a marker so interesting there i did not read that before if you have uh, miniatures based up to uh, hail caesar you will be able to um, just put them on the board that makes good that's really interesting so you may not have to rebase oops sorry guys uh, but i would like to use my miniatures for that so uh yeah that's certainly an interesting little re revelation so we're gonna go to game turn so every battle uh fought in spqr takes place over a number of turns during each turn every player will have a chance to move fight all of his units when a certain number of moments uh, per, uh, turns have been completed a victory conditions have been obtained the game ends and the victor is decided so the turn phases during during a turn one player will move fight with all of his unit this is called the players phase when he has finished his opponent takes over runs through the units how in uh, his own uh, player phase these two player phases together make one complete turn of the game so of course you go first i go yeah that's one. so dice of fate so this is what i find interesting dice of fate is rather than you roll a dice at the start of the game and say you're going first for that entire game and then etc the uh the, so who who has the first player phase and each turn is decided by the fate of the gods um, dice of fate, sorry. Uh, at the start of every turn, both players roll a dice. The person who rolls the highest makes uh, chooses. So, can you choose the player with the highest score decides whether they go first or second? So, you can decide whether to go first or second. It's not you're going first. First phase. Most scenarios will tell you which um, which uh, will tell you the player's first phase. So that makes that's interesting. That is actually so. Uh, using the dice of fate, rolling the dice of fate at the start of each turn is a big. A portion of tactics so this may silly this is just a little brief things about saying going first or second is it good to go first is it good to go second uh, and about moving your guys into position so we'll have a quick turnover like i said guys we're going to go through this but we just want to probably the more core rules we're going to go over just to see what kind of you know skirmish game this is going to be i, I love Gaulic warriors i can't wait to get the transfers off them sheets so actions so this is the actions you can take during your phase so when a single unit is selected by you in the turn it must perform two actions so we've got two actions per unit it looks like uh, must be performed at this time you are not allowed to hold an action in reserve to be used later so you've got to do all your act two actions in that turn so you've got a move allows you to walk or run or otherwise travel across the table uh, shoot allows you to make a ranged attack against an NP. Uh, so melee allows you to rush into close combat to tear the enemy apart 
a special mode. So that's interesting. I thought there'd be like a charge, like you could charge them or anything or do something, but apparently not. So special allows you to prepare itself um, to do so something unusual, like load uh, a complicated weapon or use a special talent. A unit may choose to perform the same type of action twice in the same tune or choose any combination of the above. For example, a Spartan hero may choose to perform a move action if he needs to cross open ground quickly. Alternatively, he instead decides to shoot at some appro approaching Athenians with a javelin before making a melee to counterattack them. If surrounded by Athenians, a Spartan hero may decide to perform two shots action. Over the next few pages, we'll look at the different actions more closely. More important, you choose every turn. Once all units have done, the all phase is over. So compulsory move. So sometimes unit will be forced to move regardless of what player wants to do. A talent may perform, for example, flee or an example or, or compulsory movement done in the right start before the player phase regardless of it. Makes it interesting. So checks. Performing these during the game, uh, you will sometimes be called to make a check. This is done simply by rolling dice, adding or subtracting the appropriate characteristic. So this is an example. So if the final result is a six or more, the check is succeeded. For example, if a Spartan warrior is range plus one, called to make a range check, a distance, perhaps the player would roll a dice, add the Spartan range plus one. If the Spartan range scores six or more, the check is successful. If you roll a one, you failed. Uh, no matter what bonuses are being applied, a six is always a pass. So one's a fail. Sounds like Lord of the Rings to me. A little bit. A pose check. Sometimes you may make a pose check against enemy infantry. Roll and add the appropriate characteristic for the normal check. However, the enemy unit also rolls the dice and check goes in both wins. Uh, if it's a tie, you both re-roll. Sounds like Lord of the Rings to me. So the game continues. Either side gains victory by achieving objectives or a certain number have been done. Makes interesting. So every unit in SPQR has a move score which shows how far it can travel in inches with a single move action. A unit need not move in a straight line can make any direct, so it can go wherever it says. A move action does not have to be taken into its full possible length, so you can go whatever inches you like. A unit consists of more than one model. All models in the unit must do the same movement. Makes sense. So SPQR is anything placed to train on a table unit. Uh, this is an interesting part of the landscape, such as building ruins, etc. A better the game, units have a chance of being leap behind and dodge. So, uh, so in clear terrain, uh, you will not hinder movement. In difficult terrain, um, anything looks that would be difficult. Any models within the unit terrain cross the terrain will move and halve. So difficult terrain is halved, and impossible. Uh, you cannot pass impossible. Dangerous train, some train, vegetation. Uh, wow, so dangerous train, if you fail your uh, agility check, you just die. <laughs> That's a bit harsh. That is bad. You fail your agility test in dangerous and you die. So cover, some train prior to cover. This is good more for an shooting phase. So climbing and jumping, that is all for agility again. Um, so this is what happens when you're climbing so long as a simple means of climbing is present on the drain so like a ladder or a little place you can jump up it says uh, such as ladder or penalty properly four things with each move action however all its mods will start at the end of the flat surface wow that sounds bad you can die by jumping that just sounds quite funny um, so, line of sight, uh, a model of the unit able to see a target or least part of the target. So, if you can see the guy, you can shoot him. So, range weapon is shooting characteristics made of the straight line from the base, each model attacking, the closest model of the target range. You cannot target units locked in close combat. So, you shoot people, guys, you got to be shooting the people closest to you. So, weapon characteristic, like units' weapons, characteristics 2 is showing. So, we've got a javelin, uh, we've got 10 range, lethal lethal 2, 1 shot. So range is the maximum distance, 1. Special rules, which will be on page 19, under lethal and 1 shot. Which you can guess what 1 shot means. It's, of course, 1 shot. Making a range attack. So once you have selected a target during your shooting action, you check it line of sight. And in range, unleash hell. Uh, to make a range attack, go through the following steps. So uh, the attacking unit makes a range check for every model in the unit. Uh, yep. Um... Every dice that scores a six or more is successful. However, these dice may modify a range attack. So like we saw before, guys, we've got the plus ones, the plus twos, etc. That gives it. Each set attack deduct one wound for the enemy target. Uh, as with all checks, roll a one is fail, six is a hit. If the enemy model's wound are reduced to zero, remove the game and they are dead. Makes sense. Range attack table. So we've got long range, which is, of course, minus one. But 
plus two uh, when it's a large target. Um, so this bonus is applied to every 10 models, so a big unit. So when you get a unit of, of like a uh, bonus is applied to 10 men, so you've got 10 men, you get plus one. If you're attacking unit of 24 models, that's plus two. Uh, larger unit, so in case uh, where models unit have more than one wound each, you must always try to remove the complete model. So it stops putting one wound on all the other guys. Um, so we've got cover, which is just, of course, uh, light cover. Uh, this cover of schools, so it's blah, 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 crowd of panicking. Attacking a target in light cover will inflict minus one penalty when making a ranged attack. Makes sense. And heavy cover will be give plus one bonus, minus one. So heavy cover gives you armor plus minus to hit. Light cover just gives you minus to hit them. Okay, let's have a quick look. So I'm liking these rules so far, guys. Actually, quite interesting. You know, very much a skirmish game for Hail Caesar. But it is nice you are able to use your um, already painted models if you'd like. So the enemy in cover, yeah, that's all. It's a weapon characteristic. So we'll have a quick look at weapon characteristics. So we've got a dagger. So special rules are on page 19, which we'll get up soon. So melee. Melee. Once unit is making a melee action, moves into contact with an enemy and starts the scrap. To make to go to attack, go through the following steps. Every model in both attacking unit and enemy unit makes a melee check. With dice with the dice it possesses every dice which scores a six is successful for every 10 models unit gains plus one attack for maybe it's a bigger units but easier to hit but easier to kill but each set attack deducts one wound from the unit so with all checked a six is a pass one is a fail so skilled fighters uh higher skilled warriors are just adapt to deflecting dodging coming attacks if a unit melee scores that scores more than twice that uh, the twice as high as the enemy fight in the fight and the enemy suffers a minus one to melee checked wow read that again if a unit has a melee score that is more than twice as high as the enemy, so if you score double hits more than they do they get minus one penalty to melee checks note that you can make life difficult for a light infantry or skirmish unless very seriously outnumbered wow so if you're outnumbered you're going to get whooped so larger units uh, loses <coughs> wounds models should be removed starting from the furthest from the attacker so you're taking guys from the back and it's representing guys pushing forward so uh, armor the armor is very useful in close combat makes sense multiple units in close combat so this will be as many instant battle one both sides have more than one unit involved in a close combat but such fights are conducted using normal rules with each unit performing the action separately so ongoing combats, if both units are still standing in contact at the end of the game, end of the, the phase, uh, then locked in close combat, uh, fight to death. One, uh, one a model in contact with the enemy may not move out of contact with the enemy unit. So one side is killed or destroyed, one side chooses to flee. So it's a bit brutal, that is. So you just got to win. you got to win. So fleeing close combat. I've never seen this one before. So you can decide to flee close combat when you're locked in combat. Uh, the fleeing unit does not make attacks of its own. If it survives, it may move as normal. So you can flee, but they attack you. So, of course, cover and melee, melee a unit that is dug deep in cover, uh, may force it, uh, force its opponent to re-roll any of its melee checks. So we've got hiding there as well, which is just seems like you can just hide. And it... Mm, you just have to use a special action to hide. Does it mean you can't be shot? Oh, so you hide, so you, they can't be shot, but you have to be hidden. Makes sense. So I'm liking these rules so far. So we've got Troubling Gore, which I won't go into this, guys, because this is just a um, this is a starter mission. We're going to flip through that. So, so some of the rules so far, I'm quite uh, liking. We've got the challenge, as I'm assuming this is just challenging. So any hero involved in close combat may issue a challenge as part of a melee action. This may be answered by one of the heroes opposing players who is involved in the same close combat. However, if one or more heroes are present, none of the challenges and none answer the challenge, uh, all are placed towards the rear, <laughs> so you can get out of town if you're in a challenge, but you have to go to the back. I like this little picture of these guys running here. It's a nice book. This is, it's a nice book. Um, where are we? So they are, of course, uh, free to flee from the close combat, taking their more action move. Uh, if the challenge is accepted, place two heroes in the contact with one another. Uh, they fight independently of other models involved in close combat so they can't be attacked one side has more models in close combat than the other hero may reroll the melee attacks or armor checks during the challenge that's interesting so if one if one side has more models in the close combat so if you're outnumbered and your guy challenges uh you're gonna not gonna go 
really well for that uh, or enemy hero. The challenge will go on until a hero has been defeated by the other. No. Note the close combat is deemed to be ongoing if the challenge is yet be resolved, even if all the other models inside have been removed. So there's still a combat going on. <laughs> They're just all around him. Wow, interesting. So we're gonna have a quick push over. So this is about jumping down, stunning, lethal. What we're gonna do is look at the weapons actually, because this is gonna be interesting. Like I said, guys, I'm not going to go too much detail on some things because this is gonna be uh, going on for quite a while, like like it has already. So we've got stunning. So several weapon talent can stun the opponent, rendering them uh, insensible for a short time. You lose one action. So stun weapons, you lose a hit you lose a, uh, a an action so weapon rules got inaccurate the weapon is uh, shoddy built almost impossible to aim whenever the unit rerolls accessible range melee attacks makes sense lethal lethal score is used as a penalty to the opponent's armor so uh, so armor checks also the numbers of wounds removed from the unit is under a strike however the lethal weapon cannot m remove more than one model from a single successful attack so the armor checks and so I says the lethal score is used as a penalty so it should have a lethal number and you lose armor so that's like a penetration got long um, a unit using long weapons gains plus one bonus in melee when fighting an enemy who does not have a long weapon so pikemen are good one shot of course is one shot uh, parry you may force your opponent to roll one of its melee checks for every model in the unit space so I think you've, you have to have shield as well for parry or just a sword if number no I think it's probably just a sword some equipment, such as shields, also allow you to parry ranged attacks as well. So that's pretty good. Remember, you cannot re-roll a re-roll. So you have to parry the enemy has attacks and made of this. Yeah, it makes sense. Remember, this cannot be used. Uh, short weapon without reach as a dagger. Uh, short weapons suffer minus one penalty melee checks when fighting enemy who does not have a short weapon. So you've got to be careful if you've got short weapons against long weapons. Slow. Um, Require two actions to re to a special action to reload. A smasher, a heavy brutal weapon, swung at force impossible to stop. Smasher cannot be parried. Two handed, two handed weapon requires a properly wield, so use shield weapon. So you can't use your shield or second weapon. Makes sense. A very long. Uh, it's when you got a, a, a pike phalanx. So a unit using a very long weapon gains plus one bonus and melee check when fighting an enemy who does not have a very long weapon. However, if the enemy wins the round of close combat, a very long weapon may not be used for the rest of the combat. A very long weapon may not be used in a dual weapon fighting. So a, a long weapon is good, only if you're winning. A weak weapon is a blunt, uh, delivered with a little force, making it easily forward by armor. So a use unit struck by a weapon get plus one bonus to their armor against weak weapons. I'm interested who's got weak weapons. So yeah, some really good rules there, guys. Um, so let's have a look at will to fight. Even the most battle hardened warriors know that sometimes about to run away from the fight. This represented by bravery characters. This is what I've not read yet, guys. Either so I'm not, this is me learning something. At various points of the fight, a unit can be called upon to make a will to fight check. This is done by rolling a dice and adding the bravery score. If the result is a six or more than the unit's uh, unit toughs units wait a second if the unit totals six or more uh, whatever phase, if you check it's failed the number of models are immediately removed hmm wait here is men are able to so that makes set I mean, a unit result is total six or more and the unit toughs out whatever adversary faces it, it stays in the fight. Hmm, that doesn't make sense to me. So I think you want higher the better. If unit failed, number of models immediately removed, the will to fight check is failed, now they run away. I need to read book up on that, we're going to have to go and find that out. So we've got the phalanx, of course, and some rules there. Uh, for the benefits that we're going to, like I said, we're, we're going to have a quick look through there. But it is a very nice depiction of what it is. There's some definitely uh, fantastic. I've had a brief read of some of these uh, phalanx stuff because it was quite interesting. Uh, and we've got the um, close combat weapons, of course, uh, which are you know the long, the axe. I think we've got, as you can see, you got lethal, uh, lethal one there for the axe, which will reduce the um, reduce the armor but also here a great axe which is lethal two smasher and two-handed so we've got a good mix there bow javelins etc now we've got armor of course i won't go too much detail guys but as you can see uh, we've got animal skin arrow apron uh chain mail and you can see here they've got 
the chainmail of course is best with plus three helmet plus one uh, but some things like chainmail will negate your move um, and there we go yeah so pretty good equipment there uh, and we've got of course like I said when we, if you ever get to a campaign, um, a, a campaign or some sort of tournament you're playing in, this is where things will upgrade, uh, and you, you know, you get talent, experience, and you can create your own hero. As I said, there's no point in going over this, guys, because this is just what's in the book as it goes. So, as you said, you can create a warband. So this is kind of the point system. Um, like I said, everything is worth denarii, uh, which we'll flip to in a second. Uh, so we've got challenges counting. Gathering victories. These are the missions. So we've got uh, border invasion, livestock by sacred ground, sacking the village, fall of heroes, caravan. So even in this one book, guys, uh, and it said uh, heroes get injured, crippled, dead, which I think, and in, and the same thing for minions. So you got like a necromunda survival thing going off. Uh, and then we also we got the of course the the scenarios here. We've got livestock raid, ones I spoke about before. Uh, we've got the talent, so remember when we are upgrading the upgrading them in the game, we are um, do, do, do. Okay, looking at the um, so we've got talents here guys. We've got like I said this is just stuff when you're leveling up, um, etc. etc. Um, same thing here, just um, you know, we've got like Eye of the Hawk, Crippling Shots, these are all things that are gonna be in campaigns if you were to ever play a campaign. Um, same thing here. I've not actually seen any of this looked campaign stuff because it does look really good. I'd love to have a few friends to play the campaign. Same thing. We've got horse law, people parfian shot. That sounds amazing. Got that Buddha in that corner. We've got some Nabidian cavalryman. Um, natural hero. Same thing here. Um, yep. Yeah, same thing here. So creating a war band. This is what I wanted to see. So. As you can see, guys, we've got standalone games for one-off games. Uh, we recommend starting warband selling 250 to 500 denarii. Denarii, guys, are points. We're, we're going to the points. So a game will last between 30 and 45 minutes, uh, but bigger ones will take longer. You might like to take an exper experiment with your increased levels of hero. Uh, standalone game, you can do this by simply paying 25 denarii for every additional level you wish to increase. So more points in the hero. Hard of the heart, simple as. Um, so, that's kind of it there. Creating a warband, you just pay the denarii you use for. So, we've got some things about, we've got, as I said, guys, there are certain nations in this book which you get, instead of buying, what I quite like about this book is it's got several set army lists already in here. I mean, I'm assuming there will be expansions to this, and I agree, you know what, that is going to be part and parcel of it. You know, you would expect them to have more uh, points we're going to have a quick look at the next page okay to the next one so we've got Athens um, just all the information about Athens council slavery just a bit of background which is good so it's kind of a history lesson at the same time so there we go we've got the um, most most of the units like hoplites archers cavalrymen uh, which of course are here uh, or just all the minions we've got pellets etc uh, etc et uh, and then we've got the missions that are based around the uh, uh, Af uh, Athens nation one night in Athens then of course we've got Britain and of course the information absolutely love fantastic this is guys actually you know you get you get you get the breakdown of the nation uh, but then you get which I always like said you get the missions that are for the thing and there's some naked men um, for the nations and this goes on uh, through to so we're going to go through we are going to go through we got then of course Caesar in Rome and of course the heroes uh, of course the heroes and legends so we've got etc we've got legendary scorpion teams we've got some of the famous people like Pompey Cracus Mark Antony and of course what I like guys Lucius and Titus Pullo from the TV series Rome. I do that like a little bit of a spoof there. And then, of course, we've got the missions assigned to Rome, which are all there, which is fantastic. So, uh, and then we've got uh, Daisha and Samarita. I think I pronounced that right. So, the uh, heroes, heroes again, the phallicsmen, tribesmen, noblemen, um, the cataphracts. The light cavalrymen, scorpion teams, 
And of course, we've got the missions associated with that. 45 sounds really good. And some more costly pictures. Uh, we've got Gaul. So we'll talk about Northern Europe, uh, within Europe and France and Germany. Um, and of course, all their fluff with that. And we've got the hero, we've got a druid, whatever a druid does. Speak about morale. That is kind of cool. I bet you could use the sacrificial model I got from the uh, star set from there. Okay, we've got horsemen, tribesmen, war dogs, which is going to be interesting. Uh, Vertingetrix, we've got some of the uh, more uh, more prominent uh, Gallic commanders. We've got Druid Circle Mission, uh, Slaughter at Dawn, Harvest Time. Uh, we've got Germania, so we actually separate. We've got the Goths and stuff like that from here. But I reckon you could interchange them with uh, uh, Celts and stuff, etc. like that. So, of course, the same thing here. We might skip. But the missions are Wolves at the Gate, uh, Forest Fight, uh, then Iberia. I very knew a little, very small bits about Iberia. Uh, so there's, of course, the stuff Iberia. And then the missions that are thing. Then, but then we have Imperial Rome. Oh, so actually we do have uh, things from Caesar to Imperial Rome. It makes it a bit different than it does. So we've got auxiliaries, auxiliary cavalry, Praetorian guards, so the, uh, the, the, the really hardcore uh, Romans there. Um, heroes, etc., etc. Yeah, so really good. Uh, what else we got here? And then the missions that are associated with Imperial Rome, which is good. So you've got a good few. You've got Macedonia. So the same again, probably very similar to the uh, uh, to the Athenians, but with one different thing, guys. What I like is the war elephant. I'm gonna get one of them war elephants. Two fifty denarii though, but it is like I said, it is cast as cavalry, and it just looks amazing. I think having a few of these on the battlefield, maybe one of them. I mean, that is gonna be good. But of course, there's the neg negative rules for the uh, thing. So you got uh, Philip II. Surprised you don't have um, Alexander, and of course the missions involved. We've got Persia, uh, of course, which is Persia. We may just skip through the nations now, guys. So we've got Darius, uh, a war elephant for Persia as well. And where are we? Let's go. Let's go. So of course there we got Persia, Sparta. We've got Sparta there, which is good. Uh, the, the missions involved with Sparta. Which is breakthrough. We've got Thebes, so we've got um, more of an Egyptian force, which is going to be cool. So we've got pellets, uh, heroes. What else we got here? What's the last nation? I think the last nation, I think, is mercenaries. So I think we all can have mercy. Whenever a player finds himself uh, facing a warband of greater points value in the campaign, he may use an, he may use any number of mercenaries to bring to his warband into the balance. He may add the mercenaries as he has warband. So that's interesting. That's something to do with more with the campaign, uh, which is certainly interesting. But you do get uh, you know you get some archers, Greek hoplites as mercenaries, uh, Parthian horse, Numidian cavalry, Numidian skirmishers, and other cavalrymen. So yeah, looking really good there. Uh, and then, of course, uh, some pellets. And then we've got some rules reference in the back. I mean, you can probably photocopy that. So there we go. I think that's all page to page. And then we've got, of course, the nations that are in here, like Caesars, Gaul, Imperial Rome, Britain, Macedonia. So there we go, guys. That was a quick look at the book inside the book. Let's not crease the book up. So that, I mean, to be honest with you, it sounds like a really good rule set there. Uh, and something I think I'm going to enjoy playing. So like I said, guys, don't forget to click that like button and that subscribe um like i said i ordered a quick overview of the book and it is a very nice book uh, and of course we're going to play this with the uh, miniatures involved in the stars there so like i said guys click the like subscribe button and hope this has been a very informal review and we will see you on the next battlefield and bye bye